these are just the default settings but as you saw I was tinkering with this graph earlier trying to get it back to the default values because some for some reason the default values have got lost somewhere but this controls the amount of hair color that goes down the length of each hair so here it, it, it's almost like a color opacity gradient white means there's more color and darker means there's less color so if we wanted to have the hair the same color from the root right the way to the tip we would make this white or we'd brighten it up like so now obviously we don't want the hair color to be brown so let's make this let's make this a wild sort of red color maybe darken it down a little bit and it's updated in the viewport as well just so we can get a rough idea now let's move down here opacity this is obviously going to change um, how see-through each hair is so at the moment they're all quite solid so let's drop this down to maybe something like let's just drop it down to half just to see the difference translucence is how much light is going to pass through each hair so let's leave that at 0 0.5 the specular color let's make this red as well sort of a bright red color and the specular power basically the higher the number the sharper the specular so let's just turn this up to 10 just to make those uh, highlights a bit sharper so we've edited these we've edited these now obviously the opacity if your hair is more see-through and you've got backlight like we have on this character the lights gonna come through around the edges a lot more and that's just gonna look a lot better so the more opaque the hair is the better but obviously if it's too opaque then you're just going to see through it too much so you have to balance that out as well so now we've changed those colors I'll just do another render and then we'll compare so that's that render done now the render time has increased again a little bit but the hair is looking a lot more interesting than it was before see yes the reds probably a bit too bright so we'll maybe darken that red down a little bit the speculars looking okay uh, we could maybe adjust that a little bit more maybe do I mean we're rendering at 512 by 512 now just so it'll fit on the screen but I would suggest doing a much larger render when you're working with hair just so you can see exactly where the the actual strands of hair are going and how they're looking so this is where we started off with with our quite frail wispy hair then we thickened it out slightly and this is it we're just refining the color and we've got the nice backlight coming through and catching the hairs around the edges so let's just go a step further and just start to refine the hair a little bit more I'll just save that render just so we can keep comparing so actually let's just go back now one thing we can change initially is at the moment the hair is quite uniform so it's the same along the well along each clump it's going to be the each strand of hair is going to be exactly the same so we can add a bit more variety to this if we go back up to our main clump and hair shape we have a thinning tab here now if I we'll see if we can see it in the viewport if I increase this as you can see the hair sort of creeps back and what that what this is doing is sort of varying the each hair in the clump so we're getting more random sort of ends to the hair and again this is making it look a lot more interesting at the moment previously as you can see let's just go back let's go to our perspective view so we can get a bit closer as we can see each clump sort of each hair in that clump all they all end at the same time right at the end of each curve as we add an element of thinning you can see some of those hairs pulling back so we're getting that variety in there now I'm just going to turn this right up to one and you can just see it's just fading away the hair at the end so that again that's just adding a bit more variety in there making it maybe look a little bit more realistic now obviously you maybe don't want it to set to one so 
it's another attribute for you to just start playing around with. What we can also do if we scroll down we have our displacements tab here and this is going to add a bit of noise and a bit of sort of randomness to the hair as well. Now we can add a bit of a, of a curl to it so this is just going to add a bit more of a random curl. I can adjust the frequency. We've got noise method of you know you've got your different options surface UV or clump UV and then you can go in and like this as you can see that's sliding around the the actual head itself so what we'll do is we'll set it to random and this is just going to give us as you can see it's very subtle but it's just going to give us a little bit of random noise in there can just the frequency and then we've got sub clumping met method and this is just going to add like sort of little clumps see how it's pulling the hair together and again you can add a random amount to that and adjust the number of sub clumps so again this is just adding a bit more variety to your hair so once you've done the the main shape you've got your colors uh, your opacity you've added curls or whatever to it you can go in and just add a bit more randomness now and again we've got another graph here which controls where we want our displacements to be so let's say we want the hair to be okay at the beginning but then get all the randomness towards the end we'll maybe just add in another point here and you can see it updating in the viewport so we want slight randomness coming up to the middle and then it gets quite random towards the end so it's just another couple of values for you to play around with so let's let's maybe leave that there because what we're in danger of doing now is starting to venture more into advanced territory and the whole point of this tutorial was just to introduce you to these basic steps show you that it's not difficult to get hair and cloth set up you can play around with it and it's just these key values which give you this sort of the look and the feel of the hair and the cloth if we start to move a bit further forward now then we're going to get into step into the realms of uh, more advanced areas and I think what I'd like to do is leave this here and we'll maybe explore that in a future tutorial but for now you've got the basics so let's do a final render and just see what difference editing those values has done so I'll pause the video again so there's the current render if we compare it with what we had before before it's a lot thicker but now, because we've added that element of thinning, towards the end has, has thinned out, for want of a better word. Now, we've maybe added a bit too much, but all we need to do is just uh, adjust that slider, do another render, and just start to tinker with it a little bit more. And that randomness is coming through, with the sub-clumping and the noise. And we also made the hair colour a little bit darker. But I'm quite liking the way the backlight's coming through here and catching these hairs just around the rim. So there's not really much more that I want to look at in this tutorial. Like I say, we now we've got the basics covered. The next step, we're going to start venturing into more advanced territory. And I'll leave that for another tutorial. What I'd like you to do now is just take what you've learned and just continue playing around with the hair, adjusting those main sliders uh, and values that we've been looking at and see if you can get a nicer hair look and feel, something that you're a lot happier with. And the same with the cape. Maybe you want a thicker cape um, so you can adjust those values as well, playing with its mass, um, its rigidity and all those sorts of things. Again, just to get the look that you're after. And I think we will leave the tutorial here. So I, uh, I hope you've learnt a lot from this and I hope it's opened your eyes to the use of dynamics and using actual hair rather than using polygon strips or geometry. Um, uh, it'd be nice if you take what you've learnt and expand upon it. But, uh, yep, 
Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.